Hello everyone. So this is part two. Uh, I'm going to continue with uh, you know 45 points of counseling on PDF. Now comes the latching. Okay, so let's see what happens in latching. Latching the baby's attachment to significant portion of lower part of the areola is called latching. Okay, the mother should lightly brush her nipple against baby's upper lip so the baby opens his mouth widely. So many times what happens now? Uh, I have seen in the field that a uh, lot of mothers tend to open baby's mouth by putting finger in the mouth. Okay, and they will try to do something to open the mouth. They don't have patience, right? So uh, this is not re recommended at all. You don't want to put finger in the mouth and open baby's baby will clench further. Okay, so what you need to do is to you ask the mother to uh, kind of brush the nipple, you know, against the nipple. So here in this position, what is happening? Uh, baby's upper lip is basically brushed against the nipple. Okay, and then as soon as baby opens the mouth, you know, you tell the mother to be ready. Okay, so here uh, what is happening again? I'll show you uh, on. I'll demonstrate to you. Okay, uh, here baby is ready now to feed. Okay, baby's uh, mother is holding the breast properly. Okay, and what she is doing? Uh, she is basically brushing the upper lip of the baby uh, on the nipple, and. It takes some time, maybe three minutes, four minutes to baby to open the mouth. Tell her that she has to wait good, at least three to five minutes, you know, for baby to open the mouth. And how much uh, mouth opening should be there, which I have mentioned over here, it should be uh, between 120 to 160 degree, okay, minimum 120 degree, okay. So if she doesn't mm, wait and if she immediately push the baby, uh, there will be only nipple latch. Okay, so tell her to wait till and the way I explain to mother, I tell her that okay, if I make a big sandwich for you, how are you going to open your mouth? And she, she most of the time she opens, she, she shows like it should be this big. Okay, so that's how I tell her that okay, you wait till baby opens a big mouth because there's a big, you know, uh, breast which is ready to go in baby's mouth. So she has to, baby has to open the big mouth, right? So this is how I explain. So that is important. Another thing which is very important, you tell mother to be ready. Because if she's ready, she'll be immediately able to push that breast in baby's uh, uh, mouth, okay? And then uh, because it takes just a fraction of a second to for baby to keep that mouth open. And within that f f couple of fraction, if she doesn't push that baby into the breast, you know, baby will immediately close the mouth, okay? So tell her to be ready and it's like, it's like a, that she needs to have a very good reflex. As soon as baby opens the mouth, just push the baby in the breast, okay? That's important. Uh, you must practice all this thing, uh, you know, in the ward or wherever you are so that, you know, you know, like how, what it takes to have a good attachment, okay? So you practice first and then basically teach mothers. Okay, so here uh, your 26th point is when the baby opens his mouth between 120 to 160 degree wide, the mother should put the lower part of the areola of her breast inside baby's mouth, okay? This can take around two to three minutes. But it is important to wait until the baby opens his mouth widely in a hurry if the mother tries to put the areola into baby's mouth which is not widely open yet the baby will only attach to nipple and will not get enough milk while breastfeeding okay and one more thing you want to tell her that try it for just about eight to ten minutes and if she's baby is not opening the mouth that means baby is not hungry you put the baby down okay baby is not hungry uh, or there's some there are some other issues but you don't want to force feed the baby okay the baby is not opening the mouth for say eight to ten minutes just let baby uh, sleep okay so that's this is important okay now uh, another point which is important the uh, baby's upper lip should be a little above mother's nipple okay so this this one uh, this uh, upper lip should be just above the nipple okay the lower lip should be at the edge of the areola so let's focus what's going on baby's upper lip should be little above mother's nipple baby's lower lip should be at the border of the areola if the mother's areola is small then the baby's lower lip will be beyond the border of the areola this is correct in deep attachment of baby's breast so this means that you know if the areola is big then the upper lip should be just above the nipple okay so the upper lip will be just over here okay and the lower lip will be at the border of areola and the and the breast but if Areola is say very small 
okay so in that case basically baby will have a full ladle in the mouth but the lower lower lip will be on the breast okay so you make sure there is a asymmetrical latch this is called asymmetrical latch okay so here what is happening your upper ella is visible lower lower ella goes into baby's mouth okay so this is important okay the baby's lower lip should be curled in an outward direction this is part of your who criteria okay uh, you want to make sure that both uh, lips especially lower lip is curled out, outside not inside because when when baby's uh, fing, uh, you know the lips are curled inside baby will not be able to suck okay baby's lip and chin should be completely embedded into mother's breast so this is one more important point which i feel very very strongly about okay uh, because what is happening that uh, you know uh, when we are only focusing on the chin going into the you know, breast and not lips many times you know uh, babies don't have deep attachment okay so just in how i had explained to you that uh, we need to do press compress release uh, for expression of milk you know like press compress release so similarly i want you to understand that what is this press so if baby is basically kind of uh, brought very close to the mother and baby's uh, you know head is pressed in the breast okay so that that pressing will kind of will ensure that baby is latching on to the deeper part of the collecting duct and will be able to uh, kind of uh, suck out lot of milk okay so uh, this this is this is very important that you make sure that you tell the mother once you know once a latching is done you tell the mother to take the baby and push it into the breast so that the breast is kind of pressed a little bit inside okay so that the lips are not visible and the chin is not visible both lips and chin should not be visible okay if the lips are visible that means it's still very far we will not get a good amount of milk transfer and if you want really good catch up growth that pressing of lips into the breast is very very important okay all right uh, so now you have latched the baby okay now what we want to do we want to teach mothers how to see if the latching is good or not okay so that objective examination is very very important because what happens many times when we teach mothers uh, latch good or not they they don't look at the latch uh, without looking at the latch how would you know whether the latch is good or not so that objective examination is very important i don't like subjective examination just by looking at it you won't know uh, whether there is a good amount of uh, big mouth there is good amount you know where is the lower lip all these points that you need to check when you are uh, checking the latch okay so the way Way you check the latch is basically uh, what we're going to do. Suppose uh, mother is, uh, you know, holding the baby, okay, and you teach mother how to check the latch, okay. And here, uh, baby is deeply attached, okay, but she has to check it whether baby is deeply attached or not. So what she's going to do? She's going to basically put her fingers, okay, on the breast where uh, the lower lip is there, and she's going to press it. because right now baby is so close to mother that she will not be able to see how the mouth is where the lower lips are so she has to press the breast where the lower lip is there okay and then she is going to check so over here she is going to push it over here and going to check uh, you know uh, attachment points so what are the attachment points that she is going to see that i'll come but let let me uh, go through this point to check if baby is deeply attached to mother's breast the mother should lightly press her breast upward near the baby's lower lip then she must check whether the lower part of the areola is entirely in, inside baby's mouth or not and whether baby's lower lip is curled in the outward direction or not okay so this is important she must also check whether the baby's mouth is open at least 120 degrees wide or not it is essential to check these three points the mother must be taught to check them okay so uh, one point that you want to so there are few points of uh, latching that i want you to check okay first thing is the opening of the mouth so when you're checking the latch you want to make sure that baby has at least 120 degree opening of mouth okay second point is all about lips so first your mouth okay how big is the mouth then about lips so lips may there are two three points one point is that the lower lip should be at the border of areola or at the breast okay if the if the areola is small uh, another point about lip is that the upper lip should be just above the nipple okay not uh, it should not cover the whole upper areola because during upper areola, this is again the concept is same like when we eat food we always put food uh, at the lower jaw we don't put food on the upper jaw right because with lower jaw we are going to chew we are going to chew it right so we want to 
put the lower la more towards the lower lip, not, you know, we don't want the upper la going to the upper part of the lip, okay, upper part of the uh, mouth, okay. So this is important. So it's the third point is that where is the upper lip, okay. Upper lip should be on the upper lip of nipple. Third point is that where should be the, uh, how the lower lip should be curled outside. So you want to just make sure that the lips are curled outside and not inside, okay. Uh, and another point about uh, uh, basically chin and upper lip, it, both the lips and upper, uh, both lips and chin is embedded into baby's uh, mother's breast. So that is very, very important that, you know, uh, it should be completely embedded. Like for example here, if baby is coming like this, if suppose if baby has very good attachment, see here you will not be able to see the lips and the chin, okay. So baby has really good deep attachment, but deep attachment will occur only if there is a big mouth. So that big mouth opening is very, very important while you're checking the latch, okay. Uh, and the last point is basically there should be asymmetrical latch. So while you're checking, you have to make sure that you're seeing the upper areola more and then lower areola. Uh, you don't see lower lip because obviously it's in the mouth, okay? So that that one point that you want to check. So these are latching uh, points that you want to examine, okay? Uh, once the mother confirms deep attachment, so here now what is happening is basically here uh, mother has already checked the latch, okay? And baby has a deep attachment, okay? Now what she's going to do, she's going to bring this hand, uh, you know, behind baby's uh, back, okay, for the support. But many times what happens, uh, when she brings his hand back, many times she she removes his hand. Now, if this happens, if she removes his hand, uh, remember that baby does not have neck control for first two months. So if she doesn't have neck control in first two months, baby will be able, baby will, what will happen? Baby will fall backward, okay? So if baby will fall backward uh, or baby's neck fall backward, then basically there'll be delatching. Okay, or the lit, uh, latch will become very superficial. So you want to make sure that you know you tell mother to keep this control of neck very keep the control strong. She should in fact push that uh, head in the breast. Okay, will not baby should not be falling off. And second hand she can bring it behind baby's uh, uh, kind of back back. Okay, now sometime what happens? Sometime mother has very heavy breast. Okay, so you want to make sure that uh, you have a full support. Uh, of the breast, so you bring that hand, okay, uh, elbow below uh, the breast and give the support a little bit. So you tell her to lift up the breast a little bit because many times what happens, the breast is so heavy that baby, poor baby cannot hold the whole breast just by mouth, okay. So she will have to give support to her breast. So I do recommend pretty much in all the mothers that when she brings the hand, tell her to support her, uh, you know, uh, that breast with the elbow joint and lift it up a little bit, okay? So that really helps the uh, deep attachment for the baby. So here again, I'm gonna go back again. Once the mother confirms deep attachment of the baby to the lower part of the areola of her breast, she can release her breast from her hand and place that hand around baby's back for support. But she should not move the hand with which she's holding baby's head. If a mother has a very big or heavy breast, and she releases from her hand after deep attachment, then the areola can slide out of baby's mouth. In such cases, after releasing the breast from her hand, the mother can use her elbow to support her breast. So here, what I'm saying is, this is the elbow. So she is basically supporting uh, her breast uh, in that elbow joint, okay? Uh, Sometimes what happens that uh, breast is so big that even this doesn't help, you know? Uh, and basically, uh, breast tend to come out from mother's uh, baby's mouth. Okay, so in those scenarios, I tell mother to keep holding the breast in a U-shape hold, but to make sure that, you know, she puts some pillows under the, under the uh, you know, uh, elbow joint so, so that she can basically, you know, breastfeed well. Okay, and this is, you have to do this only while baby is small. When baby is a little bit big, now, then baby will have big mouth, baby will have everything, you know. Uh, but first couple of, I would say first couple of months, you know, she had, she'll have to support the baby a lot. Okay, and especially in uh, low birth weight babies or premature babies, you know, because those babies are small. So you want to kind of give full support, you know, so that there is a good deep attachment. Okay, um, here uh, point number 33, 
is uh, the mother should breastfeed from one breast completely before offering the other breast to the baby okay now this part is very important because uh, we know that the front for milk which is in front part of the breast that milk is more watery and has protein while the back part of that breast has a lot more fat and it is uh, very uh, you know it has lipid rich uh, good fat okay so it is high uh, in calories as well also it has fat which is uh, more of dha epa which is omega 3 fats which are very very important for uh, brain development okay so we want to make sure that mother understand the importance of emptying of one breast uh, the way we tell them is that uh, you know we want to tell mother not to judge whether uh, breast uh, is completed or not or breast is uh, finished uh, one side or not you want to basically have uh, equal uh, you know uh, you want to teach them uh, objective examination not just subjective okay so the objective examination is very very important uh, to uh, kind of assess whether breast is completely emptied or not okay to check whether she has fed the baby from one breast completely the mother should express milk from that breast with her hand if the thin watery milk comes out of the breast or if there is a good flow of thick milk on expression it means that the baby has not completely breastfed from that breast the mother should continue breastfeeding from the same breast so here uh, you know obviously here we want to teach mother how to do milk expression uh, i have uh, shown earlier also but it's basically pcr remember pcr uh, you know press compress release so you are pressing the breast against the chest okay backward against the uh, chest okay then you are compressing and then you are releasing you are pressing it against the uh, chest wall press compress release so that press compress release and you want to make sure that your fingers are only two fingers away not too far because if it's too far you know you will not be able to express milk if it is too close it will only basically press on nipple and then breast milk will not come okay so you want to make sure that uh, you know uh, we don't have uh, uh, you know just a nipple uh, pressing okay and you want to now uh, and she has to see it objectively she has to see it uh, what is the kind of milk which she is uh, you know when she is removing what kind of milk is coming okay and this she should do if the baby say delatches or if uh, baby has gone to sleep you know uh, so when she is trying to see whether she needs to feed the baby on the same side on the other side she needs to kind of uh, make uh, you know she has to press compress release and manually express and see uh, you know what kind of milk is still remaining in the breast okay so here uh, the mother should feed the baby uh, uh, you know completely mother should breast uh, feed the baby from each breast completely this includes the thin watery milk rich in protein that comes first and the thick milk rich in fat that comes later both fore milk and hind milk are necessary for the baby's growth the baby should be offered the other breast only after breastfeeding from one breast uh, is complete okay if the baby is still hungry it will breastfeed from the second breast too so this is important like uh, when to breastfeed uh, you know on the other side okay so if suppose the milk is flowing and it's watery it's translucent obviously the milk is still the thin milk is still there if she is pressing and the milk is very thick and is coming with lot of force you tell the mother to feed the baby still on the same side okay but if now you know uh, she is pressing it and then only few drops are coming thick drops are coming that means that milk is now over on that side she can then breastfeed on the other side okay so this is the object examination i very very strongly uh, believe that you know once mother understand uh, like how uh, like how the empty breast should look like or feel like you know then uh, you know she will ensure that the whole breast is completely empty before she goes on the other side most of the time what happens in the field uh, when say baby delatches de or when baby sleeps on the breast she feels she tries to compare the weight of one breast to another side okay and when you compare it you know although she may have lot more uh, hind milk present because she's comparing it on the other side with the full breast obviously your your uh, this breast is much lighter than the other one right and then she will inadvertently inadvertently uh, put the baby on the other side uh, before she completely emptying the side of the breast okay so that's why i have put in this objective examination the mother must make the baby burp 
uh, before offering the second breast. To do so, the mother should make the baby sit on her lap comfortably. Then the mother should cup the baby's jaw with her hand. So this cupping is very important. So the fingers will cup, uh, come on the jaw uh, over your jaw angle, not on the neck. Okay, because in the neck you have this carotid artery, carotid uh, uh, vein, so you don't want to press on the neck, it is basically on the bone. Okay, uh, slightly bend baby's back and slightly bend baby's torso forward. The baby will burp within two to three minutes, the baby will also open its eyes. Okay, so uh, two things happen as I explained to you earlier. You, once you put the baby in a sitting position, you know, you want to make sure that you're holding the jaw of the baby and not the neck. Okay, and you're basically uh, putting the baby forward a little bit and the other hand would be just on the back of the uh, uh, back, you know, not, you don't need to pat the baby, you don't need to do anything, it's just you put the baby, uh, your hand on baby's back, okay. And two things will happen. One thing that baby will immediately burp within a minute, I promise. It's, it's very, very, uh, you know, uh, powerful. And second thing what will happen is baby will, uh, if baby is hungry, they will open the mouth. Uh, mouth, actually they'll open the eyes. So, you know, baby will open the eyes and they'll, they'll look around. Okay, so you want to uh, kind of, this is a, you don't want to put the baby this way. Because what happens, you know, baby goes to sleep, mother goes to sleep, everybody goes to sleep and baby will feed only one one side. Okay, and that two and a half. So I don't recommend doing this, you know, put the baby in a sitting position, wake up the baby. If baby goes to sleep, immediately you, you know, try to wake up the baby. But if baby is not waking up, you delatch the baby, put the baby in a sitting position, examine your breast, whether you have finished your uh, hind milk or not, and then make decision fast. Don't keep sitting with baby uh, lashed to the uh, breast without baby actively sucking. Okay, because that will take a lot of time out of mother's uh, schedule. Okay, and that will also kind of what will happen that baby will feel only the uh, four milk, baby will pass urine, but baby will not gain weight. Okay, so that uh, quickly, you know, making decisions uh, and putting baby to sleep, you know, uh, once uh, baby is fed well, uh, that will help uh, both mother and the baby. Okay. Okay, now the 37 point is the, if the baby falls asleep, uh, uh, breastfeeding, the mother should uh, caress its back or tickle feet. The mother can also make the baby sit in a position of the burping. Okay, so this is a very powerful way of again waking up the baby to put the baby in a burping position, in a sitting position. Okay, uh, if the baby is attached only to nipple or if the baby goes to sleep while breastfeeding, then the mother can put her clean little finger in baby's mouth to remove her breast from baby's uh, mouth. So here a lot of time what happens is baby goes to sleep on the breast. Sometimes they, she see that uh, you know, the latching is not good. So she will have to kind of put her finger in baby's jaw, kind of release the suction. Okay, and then remove the baby. Okay, because if you don't do that, what will happen if you just pull the baby when baby is attached, then mother will get nipple sore and you don't want that. So make sure that, you know, she puts, uh, she releases the suction and uh, kind of open baby's mouth and it becomes much easier to delash the baby. Okay, uh, this will open baby's clenched mouth and the baby can easily take her area out of baby's mouth. Now, if baby's nose is pressed uh, tightly into mother's breast, then the mother can gently extend baby's neck in the outward direction. So the baby's chin is pressed further into uh, mother's breast and the baby's forehead is pulled away from mother's breast. Okay, so this is very important. Here what is happening is basically suppose for some reason, okay, uh, if mother, if baby's nose is pressed into mother's breast, what you want to do, you want suppose here, you know, here is the breast and if it if the nose is getting pressed what you want to do you want to tell mother to just extend the neck a little bit like this okay so when she does that of course you want to see that baby has a good attachment so if there is no good attachment she has to remove baby delatch and latch again but if the uh, mouth is big if the attachment is good but the nose is getting pressed tell her to basically you know just extend the neck a little bit like this Okay, so that way what happens, see the, so the nose is coming out like this and the lips and the chin is going more further into baby's breast, okay, uh, mother's breast I mean, okay, okay. Uh, if the, uh, here, so this I mentioned that uh, how you can just extend the neck, don't bring the baby out completely, don't bring the baby out like this, okay, you just kind of extend the neck, okay, so the, uh, so the nose comes out, okay. Uh, 40th point is if the baby is breastfeeding correctly, then baby's cheeks will appear round and full. There will be no dimple in its cheeks, 
the baby won't make fast swallowing sound when swallowing milk the baby's jaw will slowly and distinctly drop down so here this part is very very important uh, you want to examine baby's cheeks when baby sucking okay it should be round and full there should not be any dimple if there are dimples then it is a wrong uh, latch okay so let's see what happens when there are dimple if if dimple appears in baby's cheeks while breastfeeding then it means that the baby is feeding only from the nipple there is more of a upper part of uh, areola than the lower part of the areola in the baby's mouth or baby's lips and chins are not completely embedded into mother's breast so this is important the three things that you need to look for okay now this is diagnostic step so if there are any dimple that you see in baby's cheeks three things will happen one thing that basically uh, either there is only nipple in the mouth just nipple latch so nipple latch will create uh, dimpling okay second thing is that baby will have uh, that the uh, you know uh, Uh, baby will be very far from the breast so even the latch may be good but if both the lips are visible you know chin is visible that means baby will have baby will have you know it's like you know when we have a straw we always have a straw very kind of very close our mouth is very close to the straw right so when you are sucking uh, you know you have a very good slurping right but if the straw is very far then you will have to basically work very hard and you will see that dimple in your cheeks too so similarly you know uh, basically baby sucking right from the breast so if the if baby is very far that so so much so that the lips are visible and chin is visible that means baby is not uh, attached deeply and that baby will have uh you know and in that case what i do if the mouth is big then i just press the uh, baby's head into mother's breast okay but if the mouth is small that means baby is attaching only to nipple in that case i will remove uh, delatch the baby and attach the baby again okay and the third point is if the upper areola is in the mouth so what happens many times when the baby is brought with too much lateral to uh, the the nose being too lateral to nipple okay in that case what is happening is basically more of a upper areola going into the mouth so when you examine the latch and if if there is more of upper areola that means baby will have again uh, dimple okay so those are the three diagnostic things so if there is a dimple you want to do diagnostic and figure out where the problem is and then come up with a solution okay all right then uh, second uh, next point is your every 24 hours the mother must breastfeed 10 to 12 times out of which she may, must feed at least 3 to 4 times at night now this is mainly for first 2 3 months okay they will need 10 to 12 times so after 3 months or so they will uh, feed you know 8 uh, times and then then uh, by 5 months they go to you know just 6 times in 24 hours okay but first 2 months you want to make sure that baby feeds at least 10 to 12 times if baby is not waking up you wake up the baby okay uh, and also uh, monitor weight gain weight gain should be at least in first 5 to 6 weeks i recommend 40 grams okay but minimum should be 30 okay because if it is low, lower than 30 baby will uh, falter okay the baby must be exclusively breastfeed breastfed for 6 months after 6 months continue breastfeeding along with the complementary feeding until 2 years of age okay so this is important uh, baby grow very fast at 2 weeks 6 weeks and 3 months of age uh, during this days the baby needs more milk that's why the mother must breastfeed more frequently and each session should be longer duration the mother must learn the correct technique of breastfeeding so you know what happens during this time right 2 weeks 6 weeks and 3 months baby is feeding a lot okay and uh, feeding a lot why because they are growing this is a growing phase okay so if you you want to tell the mother beforehand because if you don't tell her that baby is hungry because baby is growing what she'll feel that oh i'm not getting enough milk now i need to Uh, give pre lact or oh, i need to give you know outside milk i want to top feed right so she will immediately switch to formulas okay so you if you tell her beforehand that yo this is a time that baby is growing just make sure that you give her give baby frequent breast milk or you increase the duration okay so then she'll she is well well informed and she will not start formula okay all right and the last point is basically i have shown that how to express breast milk you want to show this technique press compress release Uh, exactly where to keep the fingers as i've shown okay uh, it can be c shape u shape doesn't matter it basically it's all quadrant okay but the finger should be only two fingers away not three fingers okay and this is the final uh, position of the ba- uh, mother and the baby uh, do not leave that cross cradle hold so do not leave this uh, uh, hand which is there okay uh, which is there on the back of the head 
okay and the other hand should be just at the back and one more thing you want to make sure that uh, you can definitely put pillow once baby has a good attachment pillow is fine uh, mother can then take any position once the neck control comes then what you can do is the after neck control you can uh, you know use any technique it does not matter cradle hold anything but what generally mothers do in our project is they try to latch the baby in a cross cradle hold when babies are older but then they become comfortable and they come into cradle hold okay but uh, latching is much more easy in a cross cradle hold there is no doubt about it it's just a mechanic mechanic uh, uh, mechanical engineering i would say of breastfeeding you know so okay so i'm going to end my 45 points over here and um, i hope uh, you um, understand uh, what i'm talking about uh, so now i'm going to discuss uh, breastfeeding assessment form uh, which we have improvised uh, or we have taken it from who uh, breastfeeding observation form but we have improvised as per our uh, experience you know uh, so in this uh, form what you need to do is basically once you teach the mother okay in first 24 hours after birth you're teaching her proper techniques of breastfeeding okay and you're teaching her 45 points but after day after day zero so on day one after 24 hours you want to see whether mother understood what you what you have told her right so here what we do is basically we we fill out this assessment form when mother comes to us or when we go to mother you know after 24 hours uh, and then we basically it's a checklist okay so in this checklist what we uh, basically what we want is we want mother's name we want baby's name baby's date of birth date of first assessment like when you're starting you know, to assess the breastfeeding and then baby's birth weight okay so here this left side is all the favorable behavior okay favorable behavior means whatever you told mother she's doing that correctly and on the right side these are all unfavorable behavior okay so that means that mother probably didn't understand or she did not remember or she still needs to work on her skill skill and also content just not skill okay uh, so here what we recommend that here this this particular so we have drawn columns okay and we want at least um, i would say uh, you know five uh, you know checks at least okay so here suppose you have checked suppose baby is born yesterday so you would write uh, you know baby's date of birth which is yesterday and today day today's day 1 so today you will write the date today's date you will here you will write day of life 1 okay uh, which is uh, 24 hours and here then you will start looking at, you will start observing so you will see when you do rounds on mothers okay uh, if she is not breastfeeding you will ask her this question that okay when do you breastfeed the baby and if she's saying that okay she uh, she knows early hunger cues she, you know when baby is kind of little bit squirming opening the mouth if that time she's uh, breastfeeding the baby that means it is favorable behavior and you will tick mark over here under day one okay now if you realize that mother is waiting for baby to cry and only then she breastfeed that means it's unfavorable behavior so here again you will write down today's date day one day of life one and then you will click on this one means this one is means that mother does not know that she has to breastfeed when baby is uh, showing early hunger cues okay so this is how you fill out the whole form we have put in all the important points of uh, uh, you know breastfeeding uh, you have to observe and if if there are uh, so few points you may have to ask her directly okay so for example when you're observing uh, suppose you miss that mother washed her hands okay so you will ask her, did you wash your hands uh, and she says yes if she says yes then you will be ticking mark over here but if she says no she hasn't washed her hands with soap and water then you will be ticking mark where over here okay so this is important the mother drinks one glass of water before breastfeeding so here you will uh, put in that uh, you know here you will say okay mother drinks one glass of water and here you says mother does not drink uh, uh, water before breastfeeding so this way we have the whole form uh, we have put it uh, you know for you so that you don't need to remember a lot of these points 
okay and uh, you know this way you will not miss any point if there are any points which are unfavorable then you can only focus on those points okay you don't have to keep repeating same thing over and over again if mother understood so uh, this i recommend for all the babies okay uh, in a hospital i recommend uh, of course uh, you know we have a project right now going in nashik and uh, over there you know we are uh, coming up with a protocol where uh, every shift uh, these babies will be observed mothers will be observed by staff nurse in every uh, shift and then you know they will fill out this uh, breastfeeding assessment form but if you're in a private practice uh, what i recommend is to definitely you know uh, teach her during anc time and then you can visit her once in the hospital okay uh, and fill out this assessment form to understand whether she is learning it or not properly and also then you will have to follow lap protocol so in lap protocol you know you will uh, basically see uh, at what date or what day of life that you need to fill out this breastfeeding assessment form so here you can again mother's preparation uh, i've gone already a lot in detail uh, in my 45 points so i'm not going to go in each point but it's basically this our left side is all your favorable uh, and this are all unfavorable okay so it goes in the horizontal line so for example baby's position baby's head back hips and legs are fully supported by mother's left hand here yeah, baby's full body is not supported by the mother only the uh, uh, you know head of the baby is supported only the uh, shoulders are uh, shoulders are uh, supported okay uh, baby's ear sh uh, shoulder joint and your hip joint are in the same line here it's not in the same line baby's body is twisted neck is twisted so again you will observe it when mother is breastfeeding and you will uh, check mark with if it's positive you do it over here if it is like if if it's unfavorable you check it over here okay so this is how you will go through each and every uh, aspect of breastfeeding so contouring of breast i have put attaching latching the ba uh, latching the baby to the lower ella deeply uh, we have put it important counseling points so this all the important counseling points so this are all the uh, you know important aspect of uh, breastfeeding form that you need to uh, work on uh, and uh, you know basically make sure that uh, mothers by by end of it mother should have all the positive favorable points if you get all the points on this side that means you have mother has mastered the breastfeeding technique and then obviously comes your uh, you know your weight monitoring because weight monitoring very important as i told you in first uh, five weeks baby's gain almost 40 to 50 grams a day okay so if they if she's gaining less than 35 uh, 30 then i would be my antenna would be up and again do this breastfeeding assessment form every two days okay don't wait for one week because by the time you know baby will learn long latching mother's supply will decrease and then baby will have a problem okay so do it every two days till you kind of till mother master this technique okay so this is where i'm going to end it uh, and i hope you use it we're going to put the link of this uh, you know breastfeeding assessment form lap card uh, learning action protocol and as well as your pdf for uh, 45 points stanpan chart nutrition chart which you'll be seeing in my next session uh, and uh, you know uh, i will again come back and talk to you in my live sessions okay thank you so much